May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our heart be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Today is the only time a reading from the Book of Judges appears in the three years of Sunday lectionary readings. The book records 200 years of history, a time when judges ruled over the 12 tribes of Israel, dating from Joshua's death until the formation of the monarchy under Saul. It's a unique era of governance, a liminal space and in-between space and history after the prophets Moses and Joshua and before the establishment of the reign of kings. The book of Judges shows us how the people act and believe in this liminal space between what has been and what has yet to be. The stories of these judges have a pattern. There is a cycle of sin, punishment, repentance, and deliverance. Each judge's story begins with the verse, the Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. A foreign king oppresses them, The people appeal to God. God raises up a judge to overthrow the oppressor. The threat is over. The people are faithful while the deliverer is alive. And for the most part, land has rest. Repeat. In the case of this book, repeat 12 times. That's the formula anyway. The book of Judges is an illustration of the downward spiral for Israel and its leaders. The people forget about their commitment to the covenant God made with them. They live with oppression for decades and only call on God when it becomes too much. They expect God to swoop down and save them or get vengeance for them, and then they go back to their old sinful ways again. It's a terrible pattern of behavior from the people God loves. It doesn't seem like much love is always coming God's way, except in a time of desperate crisis. However, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, even when the people are not. In this era, the judges made rulings and led mediation on disputes between people, similar to how a judge operates in our society. They are part of the legal system and a vital component of the rule of law in the society. Unlike today, judges in this era also acted as military leaders. Samson is one of the more famous judges during this era. However, today's reading tells us the beginning of the story of Deborah. She is one of the 12 judges mentioned in this book, and she's the only female judge. Her story is a doozy, and it's right up there as a story worthy of the superhero Marvel Universe treatment. You might want to read past today's reading through to the end of chapter five for the full story details. It is a literary masterpiece containing narrative prose as well as song. Not only is Deborah the lone female judge in this history book, She is also a prophetess, in addition to being a judge and military leader. As a prophetess, she takes her orders from God, and she is called wife of Lapidoth. Now, we don't know for certain if she actually had a husband, but the words in Hebrew mean fiery woman or woman of fire. God called her for a reason. She has a reputation, and she's a tough, strong character. Well, we hear the beginning of Deborah's story. King Jabin of Canaan and his army commander, Sisera, had the people in their cruel clutches for 20 years. They have the military advantage and experience. Meanwhile, Deborah prepares for war to defeat the oppressors. She summons her general, Barak, who had 10,000 soldiers from two of the tribes of Israel under his command. She sends Barak and his 10,000 to Mount Tabor, while she plans to draw out Sisera and lead him into Barak's hand. Barak must have trusted her leadership as a strategist because he wants Deborah to go with him. She promises to go with Barak, but warns him that the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Barak will not get to take down Sisera, and it won't even be Deborah. A woman who we know as Jael will be the one to kill Sisera after he flees from the battlefield on foot with Barak in hot pursuit. Jael gives Sisera shelter in her tent. He believes he is safe since her husband's family have a business alliance with King Jabin. She probably considered her options. Israel had won the battle. They are on the way to find Sisera who has lost. What good is this arrangement with the king now? She offers Sisera a drink of milk, probably drugged, and she gives him a place to rest. Then she kills him with a tent peg while he's asleep. 
When the Israelites arrive, she can show them that Sisera is dead. She becomes a hero, and she gets the glory. She has security now and has saved herself and her family. Again, you'll have to read the rest of the book of Judges for her story for all the details, because it may be a while before her story comes to a movie screen near you. Through the leadership of Deborah and the participation of Jael, Barak, and the army drawn from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun, God has defeated the rulers who oppressed God's people. God once again faithfully has responded to the prayers of the people in distress. You see, God wants peace, justice, and freedom for all of God's people. These days, we pray that that is achieved through negotiation, reconciliation, and peaceful coexistence. Last week, we remembered our own war dead and those who are veterans of war. It's easy to see in the book of Judges that even God tired of this cycle of war and sinful disobedience. War causes pain and suffering for everyone affected by it, no matter which side they fight on or identify with. Often one war sows the seeds for the next war. That's a cycle we often have seen even in our own recent history. Many generations later, after Deborah, God will send God's son as the Prince of Peace to encourage God's people to become better at peace. Jesus came to inspire us to love God, love our neighbors, and challenge us to even love our enemies. Living peaceful requires some will and determination some perseverance and dedication to peace on all sides. And with the state of the world today, we see that we clearly have more work to do on that matter of making peace and keeping peace. In the story of Deborah the Judge, we are also reminded that the Bible is a story of women as well as men. The story of women are not always represented in the scriptures. When they are named and their story told, we know that they must have been extraordinary people. In Deborah, we have a decidedly charismatic, heroic figure, while in jail, we have an ordinary woman who reaches down deep for bravery to take advantage of a situation in which she found herself. These women serve as instruments of the Lord, and they are often underdogs. They face huge obstacles, and their world seems against them. They are not expected to be able to overcome violence, and the odds are usually stacked against them. Yet God gave them power to persist. They allow God to work through them, and they place themselves in service to God and their community. They overcome, they remain faithful, they are wise. And later in chapter 5, we are told that Deborah ensured the poor in her community were fed. In the song of Deborah, her praises and accomplishments are preserved for generations to follow, so they will know of Deborah's place in their history. Women and men will hear of her courage. They will be inspired by her wisdom and be proud of her victory. They will be encouraged by her bravery, and they will celebrate her improbable heroism. And most of all, they will be reminded of her faithfulness. In our own lives, we face adversity and challenges. We may feel overwhelmed at times and believe the odds are against us. However, God is always with us giving us strength, leading us through, giving us hope. God forgives us when we sin and encourages us to repent and re-embrace God's ways of love, compassion, kindness, and peace. As humans, we are still a work in progress, and every time we make mistakes, we have the opportunity to learn and grow in wisdom. We apply those learnings to new situations in the future. God has faith in our abilities to do God's work in the world. God gives us confidence to be God's hands and feet in the world. And God is calling us all into a life of service to others, helping us to claim and live into our identity as God's people. God is also encouraging us when we feel like underdogs, giving us strength and the conviction of our faith to do our best for God and God's people and help us overcome. Amen.